Just gone 129 ARU, that's Andy Raymond Unfiltered, our man joining us in about 10 minutes or so. But first, Brendan Now, well, it's a happy new year there, my mate, and uh, welcome back to the show. Thanks, mate. We've been missing you guys a bit. Oh, well, look, we've got lots to talk about today. Um, the T20 competition, obviously. <laughs> the tackle below the waist ridiculousness that World Rugby are planning to kill the sport <laughs> with. But also, the, the rumours, the whispers, we always hear these, and of course they cause panic in New Zealand, about the Springboks going up to join the Six Nations. Do you honestly ever think this would ever happen? I do, I do. And, and I must admit, I've had a couple of discussions with people, and I think it's more a case of when, not if. Um, yeah, I don't think, you know, from a New Zealand point of view, you have to worry too much, because I think... Uh, what's been said to me is that even if we do go up north to Six Nations, you know, we'll still be playing New Zealand every year or every second year, and there will be still be some sort of contact between the All Blacks and the Springboks at test level quite quite often. So I don't think you have to worry about that. I think the plan is, obviously, look, I mean, the money's in the Six Nations for the Springboks, and it makes sense in terms of the European rugby. We've moved there with all our provincial teams now to to probably do that with the, with the national team as well. But, you know, I don't think anybody around here wants to, you know, we, we don't mind not playing the Aussies, but I don't think we, we, we want to give up playing the All Blacks. Well, that's the practicalities around how it would actually work, because also, you know, that means that what you're home and away, so those countries would all be flying down to South Africa for one match as well. I mean, there are logistics to involved here, aren't there? Yeah, I think we've seen that now in the Champions Cup and and, and, and URC. You know, the Bulls, have, uh, for instance, have played the last eight weeks of the competition. Six of those weeks that they've been away from home. So I mean, there are logistics, and I mean, and, and, and when I say six weeks they've been away from home, they've made three trips back to South Africa and then back up within a week of each other. So I mean, there there are a lot of little things that they still need to sort out. It's it's no by no means a perfect system, but. Yeah, I think I think long term, you know, South Africa's future is now in Europe, and you know, I think everybody sort of accepted it. Yeah, but uh, saying that, I don't think you know the, the ties that we have with New Zealand, we want to lose it at, at any point. No, well, no, we don't either. I mean, that's the whole point. I know that you know we've been. <clears throat> Well, we've been a little less than friendly about the Super Rugby situation. We've told Australia to get stuffed. We've, t- we've told you guys that. But look, as fans, mate, I mean, us against you guys, I mean, that is world rugby. That is that is what we want more than anything else. Having said that, you know, the old the tri-nations and, and quad nations, whatever it's called, gets a little bit tired at times. And Brendan, you know, am I just an old man yelling at the moon about the fact that why don't we have a good long tour at one time? Wouldn't that actually – wouldn't people be into that? I bet they would be at your place. Well – I think they definitely would be, and I think uh, you know the Lions is probably the only proper tour now in, on the international circuit. And I mean, I, look, I grew up on the eighty-one tour. That's still where I got my love of rugby from, from the eighty-one tour, and, that, and that's still very special in, in in my my heart. And and you know, in twenty eleven at the World Cup was probably the only tour I've ever done as a journalist where I got to go outside Auckland or Wellington or Christchurch, and. Yeah, that was something special for me as well. Uh, and I think there's a lot of South Africans would enjoy that as well. And I think there's a lot of players probably would enjoy playing outside the, you know, the Johannesburgs and Cape Towns and Durbans and play some of those rural areas, the Rotoruas and, yeah, you know, and get some of those small, smaller venues as well. I think we'd quite enjoy that. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's commercially viable, but I think there's definitely among the rugby fans, there's definitely a, 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 a uh, you know, appetite for that. Now, of course, it's commercially viable. That's why the Lions too, because they make so much money. Uh, 1981, then repeat after me, Clive Norling is the best referee that's <laughs> ever... Go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't answer that. All I, all I know is I, I, had, I had this wonderful evening just outside Wellington. I can't remember the club's name, but Alan Houston hosted us that night, and he, even he said, mate, we were very lucky to get that penalty. So, you know, we'll leave it at that. We'll debate it over a couple of beers yeah, over will, the next mate. couple we of will, years. We're, but yeah, yeah, we, we're not going to change it. The other thing was, is that, look, it's, 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 it's always, there's always 10 minutes of injury time at the end of every game. No, that's the other thing, isn't there? <laughs> well, I, I think so. No, I think if you look back at those games, I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's quite bizarre, given the rugby that we have nowadays, to look back at a game where yeah. there were flower bombs mm. being, yeah, and all those sort of things happening in the game. <laughs> I mean, I've had the most wonderful conversations with people like Keith Quinn, who told me, you know, they, they were going to be kidnapped during the tour. And I mean, those stories are legendary, and you don't just don't get them in the professional era. And, uh, 
you know, I think that's the one thing. I think people who weren't around in that summer, fair enough, there was also a dark side of that whole tour, and you understand that. But just from a pure rugby point of view, the fact that that tour actually happened was amazing. Brendan, now out of South Africa. Well, that, that dovetails nicely into the next bit. When you look back at that footage, the actual sport is a completely different game the way that it's played. There is no rucking now. So there's no what we used to call quick ruck ball. That was a phrase in rugby. Uh, there is lifting in the lineouts, and it becomes a Morris dance. Now we're talking about the tackle below the waste which the RFU were going to introduce on July the 1st for all rugby in the UK except Premiership and Championship what kind of game is it going to become if that's the case Brendan and is it actually workable a law like that uh, I don't know. Listen, there's, there's obviously a bunch of sports scientists who will tell us we're wrong, but uh, you know, I, I just, I just note that that there was a the, there was a trial in the championship where they they abandoned it halfway through, where you know there was more concussions out of that trial than anything else. Um, yeah, to me, the the funniest thing about rugby is that we we tinker with every single law except the one that actually should be tinkered with, which is the breakdown. Yeah, the breakdown is probably the biggest problem in rugby anyway, but we don't do that. But now suddenly because all these, and, and I, I say this, we, we, I don't mean it flippantly because there are people who obviously have been injured badly in, in terms of concussions and things like that. But it almost seems like it's a knee-jerk reaction to some potential lawsuits that are coming. And, and, and that's why World Rugby's changed all these things. I, I, I'm not I'm not a sports scientist. I'm sure there are better ways of tackling. I think there's probably a lot more common sense that needs to be in the game. If you look at some of the red cards we're getting lately, uh, I, I don't know. I, I just I said the other day on Twitter, no accidental clash of heads should ever be a red card in How rugby be? because you know you, yeah it's just it's just it's becoming ridiculous. And then you and you you determine outcomes of games and and things like that. And it just makes it. Even even less palatable for for spectators, and I, I just get to the point where I think to myself, you know, we're trying to win people to come over to rugby, especially in in places where rugby is not the the major sport, like outside South Africa and New Zealand, and we're putting all these things in, and I'm just wondering if we're doing the game a good a good service here, and. and at the end of the day, I don't know. It just feels like we're moving in certain aspects closer to the league, and in other aspects, we're, being, we're becoming way too technical on things. Look, I was watching a game of round ball football the other day. A guy takes a shot. I can't, it, was, it was in the A League, uh, the Australian League. I can't remember the teams, but it doesn't really matter. A guy takes a shot. It deflects off a defender's knee, but uh, it was such a powerful shot. Deflected and hit another guy's fierce smack in the nose, dropped him like a stone. He was out. He was unconscious. And I was thinking... You know, that is just an accident that can happen. When you play these sports mm. where, you know, where physicality is involved, where collisions happen, you know, you are going to get situations where, you know, you're going to get hit, somebody else is going to get hit. Part, you know, no one signs up to play a game of rugby without knowing that that is a possibility. It's like, look, we get in cars, we don't want to have a crash, but we all know that there could be some dickhead out there on the road and it could actually happen to us. Mm. I just don't know, you know, how much molly coddling, how much cotton wool can you actually do? In the end, I, I look at this stupid waste law thing, Brendan, and, and just think, what are you turning the game into? Is it going to be rugby league or is it going to be like American football where you don't tackle, you shepherd the guy, or is it going to be like rugby league where you have one tackle, then you stop and you start again? I can't see how else it's going to turn out. Well, I think we're all wondering at that at the moment, and I think I think the the problem is is you know are we being led by sports scientists here, or are we being led by what's good for the game? And you know it's it's like anything. There's a fine balance because if you if you let any doctor or sports scientist you know, lead you in how you're going to play the game, you're probably not going to have any collisions at all in the game because I mean they they'll err on the side of of caution and. You know, there's got to be a middle ground and there's got to be common sense in these things. And I just I just feel at the moment we're not quite getting to that. Finally, the other topic I wanted to talk to you about was the South African T20 competition. And we've exchanged a couple of messages about this. And look, I just have no time. Look, there's one going on in the UAE at the moment where Trent Bolt's playing, where basically you have to have a couple of under-15 players from, you know, from the local club side playing. I'm being a bit facetious. <laughs> but, you know, you've got the big bash on at the same time. You've got we're playing one day as there's test cricket going on. I don't have time to keep up with all of this. Then I... Then I tune into one of these games and the crowd at the Wanderers was absolutely jam-packed. And look, the people are talking with their feet, Brendan, that in South Africa, this competition's going off. 
Well, I think that's the thing. And I mean, we're still trying to work out how exactly they've got, got that right because, you know, we've had T20 competitions in the past, you know, that you know, had the Mazanzi League that really didn't go anywhere. We've had others, you know, the South African Leagues and they haven't really gone anywhere. And what we've basically done in this competition, is we, we've literally sold the whole thing off to India. Um, you know, the, the MI Cape Town is, is Mumbai Indians Cape Town. The Paul Royals is actually the Rajasthan Royals owns them. So all the all the IPL leagues have have, have sort of bought up these franchises, um, and but they've got to give them credit. They've got something right. They've they've bombarded us with uh, enough advertising and social media that they've got people to the to the games. And there's you know they put up things like you get a million rand for a, a one handed catch in the crowd, and that sort of spurred people on. But you know it's it's really great in one way to see. You know, fans back at cricket because you know we've gone through a very bad patch. I mean, you and I have chatted about how terrible the the, the Proteus team were in Australia. Yeah, you know, cricket South Africa hasn't done themselves any justice in the way they've handled, you know, Test cricket and 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 the whole thing in, in the last couple of years. But for some reason, this is working. And yeah, you know, you know, I know I've spoken to a couple of rugby guys, and they sort of sort of said to me, you know, how do we get those crowds here, here to us? And and I say, well, sell the game a bit more, you know, and, and that's one thing rugby doesn't do at times. It doesn't sell the game. They sort of go lurch from press conference to press conference and they don't seem to want to do anything more. Yeah, you know, I've got to give Graham Smith, he's he's the commissioner of this league. He's got to give him some credit. He's 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 found he's found the money and he's found something that gets people to the games and yeah, you know, it's been quite good to watch. Yeah, you know, there's some international stars here and I must admit I've quite enjoyed it. I've been to two or three games and I've really enjoyed it. Okay, a million rand. I'm just uh, working this out. We can retire on that, mate, can't we? I mean, what do you buy a house? You buy a yacht? You go overseas, Lisa? A million rand, man. <laughs> not in, not, not in, not in New Zealand dollars. Not in New Zealand dollars. Yeah, in South Africa, you do all right. You just remember what you guys pay for one beer. We could probably get half a case around you.